I found it on Rayma Radio. Hey, good day, everyone. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and thanks for coming back to Rayma Radio, listening to us. And uh, yeah, we we do this every Saturday morning, and we've had different different guests with us. And today's guest is also really really special. Uh, we were just having breakfast with her in the morning, and she was sharing about her illustrious uh, beginnings, humble beginnings. Uh, maybe Adeline will share more about who 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 is our That's guest. That's right. Thank you, Jason. So, Dr. Peggy C. Wong is the former banker with an international. Bank. Bank. She is also the founder and owner of her own group of companies in Malaysia and Singapore, dealing with strategic alliances, investments, and advisory services. Not only that, she is also the former board member of the Harvard Alumni Malaysia. She is the founder and former charter president of the Kiwanis Club of Bukit Bandaraya. She is also a wife and mother of two sons. And finally, she is the founder and chairman of Living Hope, which we will talk about today. Welcome to the studio, Dr. Peggy. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe before we, we go into your story, maybe you can tell us a bit more about uh, Living Hope. What yes. exactly does Living Hope do? Living Hope is an NGO for children and uh, we are independent. And Living Hope aspires to be the voice of the unheard cries of the poor, needy and marginalised children of Malaysia. And um, our work is really to give them hope for a better tomorrow and uh, we have a few programs uh, and projects related to them. One is the 181 Child Feeding Program, where we provide a free lunch to the school children for 200 days a year. And the Educate a Child Program is where we give them school bags, shoes, and whatever necessary <clears throat> to keep the child in school, uniforms and all that. Then we also have the um, uh, festivities on wheels, where we take them around and when we actually go into the kampongs and the other different places to bring joy and happiness to all these children who has been in a way neglected by a lot of people into the deep jungles of Sabah, Sarawak and all the Orang Asli villages. We also bring some of our urban poor children to the hotels where we work with them and they invite us for the festivals, festivals at Christmas and all that. And these children, for the first time, they leave their villages and they come to KL and they look at the Petronas Tower with a lot of awe and inspiration. So that's it. But my, actually, my pa- we have two main projects. One is the toy and book library, which is really my passion, where we set up these toy and book libraries, maybe in, a, in one room in a longhouse or we build it in a community centre or whatever it is. And these are really done in rural Sabah, Sarawak and Malaysia where we bring books and toys to the children because I firmly believe in education. That's the only way out of the vicious cycle of poverty. And the other project is called um, Education Resource Centre. In some areas where it is so poor and so remote, we really have to put up a building. And we source funding and all that to put up a building uh, where it is like a little community centre where they also have a computer and all that. So the children go there. And what brings me joy is that both parents are also going there during the weekends where sometimes it's so touching to see the father and the mother and the child reading the same book. Most of the time, mm. the parents are illiterate. So to me, education is the only way out of the vicious cycle of poverty. And I'm really passionate about children because they never ask to be born poor. So therefore, I believe that all of them are also children of God and who we who are able should help them mm. and we should bring in the resources to help them and to help these children so that they will not be illiterate. Even though the parents may be illiterate, but they will not be illiterate and they will not be bullied by other people outside who has different motives and ideas about being kind to them. How, how did the, the name Living Hope came about? It is actually quite strange. Actually, in the year 2006 December, the Lord inspired upon me to start this NGO for children. And I was really arguing with him and saying that I'm not interested because I'm a marketplace person. I'm corporate. I just really doesn't know what to do. He says he wanted me to go to find his children in the remotest part of Sabah and Sarawak. And I said, Lord, I do not know where to find them. And on the other hand, I was not comfortable doing all these things. I was arguing with God and I said <clears throat> that I would like to go to the marketplace because I'm in business and I'd be an influence in the marketplace. But he said, no, 
you go there. I struggled for six months and I refused to go, but I really had no peace for six months. And finally, I agreed. I said, okay, I will try. But my last trump card to him was, I said, Lord, you know, I'm a real MCC. And MCC means I'm very mong cha cha, <laughs> means I'm very blur. And I said, you know, I'm so blur and all these things. I don't know what I'm doing because in the corporate world, I know exactly what to do. My planning, my strategic planning, my five-year plan, 10-year plan. But this one, no. And God said, I love you because you are a mong cha cha. <laughs> I said, why do you love me? Because I'm a mong cha cha. Because for the first time in your life, you're going to follow me one step at a time. Hmm. And I said, okay, Lord, you win. I will go. I will follow you. I'll be the mong cha cha. And you're going to direct me. And now after, um, now I can say it's 10 years. It was just an amazing journey. And that was how I started. And actually the name Living Hope, actually one day when I was sleeping in the evening, afternoon, and I was just toying with the idea, what hope, what hope? Because people used to call me Lady of Hope because in my former position in an NGO, nothing came out. And finally when I got up in the mo- afternoon, I got up and the word Living Hope came in. Oh, I said, that sounds interesting. I said, God, did you give it to me, this word living hope? I've never heard of it before. I said, give me confirmation. And then within the next two, three days, I heard the word living hope in a CD that I was listening. I saw it in the Bible and I heard it in a song mm-hmm. other than a sermon. That's so, like three confirmations. Three confirmation. Mm-hmm. I said, that's it, living hope. And that's it's, it. It's, it's really, it speaks of hope that's living, it's yeah. not just the hope of the past. And I, I believe it's truly inspired. It's, it's catchy as well. Yeah. I remember and not only that, that, he told me, do you know that Jesus is the living hope? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Living hope is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the living hope. And that was really a total revelation from me. So it's good to be an MCC like me. MCC. <laughs> totally blurred. Do not know where to find it in the Bible. So if there's any MCC out there, if you're listening and you feel like, oh man, I'm so MCC, you can be MCC for Christ. Yes. <laughs> Just that's like right. How Dr. Peggy was. I found it on Rima Radio. You are my desire. You will always be Savior of my soul. You are. Be glorified, come and show us now your glory. Oh, we are is yours. Oh, we want is yours. Show me your glory. Show
Hi, we are Tapestry, and we have our fifth anniversary show coming up this 10 to 12 March 2017 at the Gardens Theatre. Tickets can be purchased at wearetapestry.com. So come along, we hope to see you all. I found it on Rayma Radio. Maybe to just to paint a bit more uh, context about where you came from before you started uh, Living Hope, where, what was your background? I mean, are you uh, locally from KL? Uh, I'm from Ipoh. Ipoh, okay. Um, my greatest passion is food. And in <laughs> fact, once I became Christian, the first thing that God had to deliver me was gluttony. <laughs> I just love food. And all the Ipoh people say... <laughs> Ipoh Mali, yeah. all the hey, man, we're all like that. I am, I'm from Taiping, so, from nearby, Taiping. Okay, uh, so, so some of that annoying we are quite thing clear, has, right? has uh, passed over a bit. So, um, I love food and I come from a family where my actually grandfather did a lot of um, philanthropy work. I never knew that I would be the third one in the third generation because mm. my grandfather when he came from China to Malaysia he was already a Chinese medical doctor yeah. and when he saw all his friends and colleagues that came in into the boat and they came in very sick so he started a business a medical business uh, the Chinese pharmaceutical business in Ipoh and he was giving away free medicine all the time and people always call him Dr. Chan and they know that if they need free medicine, they go to our family business to get the free medicine. Then came my father. He took over from there. He also had a heart for the poor. And my dad did two things. One was that um, this feeding, uh, I mean, giving free medicine. And what I still remember so well that my dad, there was always um, at the back of our business in our shops there, there were always at least 50 beggars at the back of the house. And I never knew why. And I also know that my father always told the cook to cook more. Now when I look back, he was actually feeding the poor. I believe it could be even the first soup kitchen ever started without knowing it. But it was just not food that was balanced. It was extra food cooked for these people. So that really touched upon my heart that, hey, so good, huh? At first, you know, giving all this food. So I, I felt that. But my father's passion was education. He was so involved when he in, in Ipo, and he was involved in the fundraising. And together, his friends, he ba- ba- uh, built the, um, I would say, the major Chinese schools mm. in Ipo. Mm. Mm. And said so that was what he did. Mm. But I never knew that during my time, I believe that my brothers will be doing this. I don't know how I landed with this. Mm-hmm. So I believe it's a calling and I believe that now I look back, it is a generation blessing. Wow. Um, having a compassion for the poor is in my DNA mm-hmm. and I believe that is God-given. It was nothing that I tried to impress or trying to tell people that I want to help the poor, but it was just very automatic because of the background I have and because of the DNA that Christ has given me. I felt that he wanted me to reach out to the poor. And now I know that it is really children mm. because children is the heartbeat of God. So it's a, it's a family legacy. It's a family legacy yeah. and it's a heartbeat of God. Yeah. So I remember when I first started, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I talked to Pastor Chu of SIB, my senior pastor. At that time, I was not even in, in that church yet. And I told him about the idea about this poor and needy marginalized children. And Pastor Chu, without even hesitating, he said, Peggy, start it. I said, why? I was hoping that he would tell me, oh, no need, it's not, not, not your calling. <laughs> I said, why? Because he said children is the heartbeat of God. Oh, I said, Pastor Chu, I'm actually a bit scared, you know. But he said, Peggy, don't worry. I will cover you in prayers. So I thought to myself, wow, this pastor is really kingdom-minded and he's willing to help me. He's willing to guide me. And even pray for me. And with his encouragement, I say, okay, God, I'm going. I'm starting. I'm going to do this ministry. And that's how I started. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a lot of bonus because you mentioned that you were in the secular world uh, as uh, you were working for an international bank. So how did God actually, you know, um, inspire you to move, to take that bold step from being in the corporate world to stepping into full-time ministry? How, how did that journey begin for you? Okay. 
that is really rather cute and rather, uh, I would say, humorous. Because after I finished my work with the bank in, in Singapore, I actually went to Harvard to do a three-year course on owner-president management program, which is only for entrepreneurs throughout the world to upgrade their skills. So I, I said to myself, at that time I was not Christian, I was going there to prepare myself to do international business. And I went there for a three-year course. Uh, in between, I come back. And I did not know that actually God is so funny because after coming back, I didn't really go to do this business. I actually came back to Malaysia and I also continued the business uh, as it is uh, in Malaysia and Singapore. And at that time, I was already, uh, God called me into an orphanage where I helped to run the orphanage as the vice chairman and brought it up from 15 children to 75 children. And only on the second year of my working in the orphanage, God called me, and then I became a Christian in year 2000. And now looking back, it's 16 years, and it has been an amazing journey. And after seven years working with the, the orphans, uh, I would say the children that have been abandoned, I took a break for six months, and I thought, it's over, I can do other things, I go back marketplace. But God has His plans, and I had to start Living Hope, and that's how Living Hope was started. I found it on Rima Radio. Hi there, my name is Victor Chua. I worship at FGAKL. Uh, today I want to read you one of my all-time favorite Bible verses, and it's taken from Philippians chapter 2. I'll be reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 11. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not e consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it on Rayma Radio. Was it a, a struggle? Uh, is there like, a, you know, was it a struggle before you enter full-time ministry? Yes, it's a struggle. I, I must say that, you know, when first God asked me to do it, I said, okay. He said, are you available? I said, no. What do you want me to do? He said, start this ministry. Then I said, I don't know anything. God said, are you available? Because all I need is your availability. I'm not needing your your capability. So you just follow me. So I suppose after struggling for six months, I finally say yes. Then I had peace and I started. And in my mind was, okay, 300 children a year times 400 is $12,000. I say, okay, God, for the first year, I'm going to feed uh, 300 children. I say, if nobody give me money, I will pay up everything. But God didn't need my money. Because within the first year, we reached already 1,200 children. Wow. So that is what I believe that when God called us, He will provide. The thing is, are we available? Hmm. So if we are available and it's our calling, it works. So you just move one step at a time. You don't have to worry about it. I must say that I did because I always call myself a professional warrior. Hmm. I always say, what's the plan one, plan B, plan three, whatever, I have all the plan. But God said, Peggy, you don't need the plans. Throw away all your plans. All I want you is to be obedient. You just follow me one step at a time. And it worked. Mm. 
So I actually really want to encourage uh, brothers and sisters, really, that if it is, you find your calling. All of us are created for a mission in life, definitely one, whether it's big or small. And you ask God, what is your mission in life? If you really seek Him, He will tell you. And once you know your mission in life, the next question is, where do I get the money? Then you surrender it to Him. He will provide because it is His ministry. It's not our ministry. So that is something I learned. Whenever I find that there's not enough money to feed your children, I really go down on my knees. I say, God, these are your children. I'm just your channel. If you're not going to give me money, how am I going to do it? And surprisingly, amazingly, maybe two, three weeks later, or one, two weeks later, the money just came. And it worked. So he also taught me to pray. And out of desperation, last time I always say, okay, I kneel and pray. But now when you're so desperate, I really learn to prostrate and go flat on the floor. <laughs> and I say, God, please help. Please, please, please. He hears. He hears mm. our prayers. He really wants me to come to a position where I'm so low and humble and really dependent on him. Mm. And it works. He has never failed me for the last 10 years. So it's a deeper level of relationship. Yeah. Because after you said yes, yeah. Then you're dependent on him even yeah. more. Yes. And it's really true that saying it says that uh that goes that uh he doesn't qualify call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And and what you alluded to what you said earlier about how he uh is not looking for our ability necessarily, yeah. but our availability. Yes. And you have made yourself available and the journey that he's brought you through after mm -hmm. that, the past ten years, I'm sure there's so many stories to tell. <laughs> so many stories, yeah. too much. Yeah. In fact, I'm just uh I felt that God wanted me to write a book mm. um on this the miracles for the last ten years and I've already started writing it and I said, God this is to glorify you. You have to tell me, you have so many miracles, so many amazing things happen. S help me to be able to f to put it together into short, simple things that will motivate people to want to serve you. Because I, all I want to tell everyone is that if it is your calling and you're serious about it, money is not a problem. But on the other side is that as a human being, we worry, where are we going to get the money? How? Now you ask me this question, it's quite amazing because I worry a lot how to get the money. But somehow God pulled me through and the money came. Mm. You know. And the other thing he asked me, are you willing to serve me for free? Oh, I said, okay. I said, what do you want me to do? You run it, you start it, and you pay for it. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. I said, I will do it because you have already blessed me. Because I came with nothing and I'll go with nothing. Whatever you have blessed me, I'm willing to do it. So for the first five years, Living Hope was really a personal ministry. Mm. Was really own money and own um, work, everything. But on the sixth year, it has grown so big. And I said, Lord, I need help. I can't do it alone. And then from that day, we became an NGO. And from NGO now, we are also almost five years old, uh, I mean, four years old. And that brought in a lot of help from outside. And also God said, Peggy, your role is really to transfer wealth from one world to another world. I said, okay, Lord. And it was so true because 90% of my funding come from the secular world. And I'm an NGO, but my my committee are Christians. So we run on biblical principles uh, and not a church ministry. And um, I'm sure people listening, they are wondering more, if they want to find out more about Living Hope and how they can also be a part of it or be a, be a blessing to it, how can they do that? Yes, they can come and visit us. And what also, and this is also a little testimony which amazed me because I got this building in year 2000 no, in 19, no, sorry, I bought the, build, the building in 1994 when I came back from Singapore. And I was looking around uh, Kuala Lumpur looking for a place to, to park myself in. And then I found this place and directly opposite the land, uh, directly opposite my office was a big piece of land. And I was praying and hoping that it will turn up into something else, you know, something. But I waited almost 20 years <laughs> and lo and behold, the last two years, the building started coming up. Mm -hmm. 
and it is called the Starling Mall. And it is we are just at the direct entrance of Starling Mall. Wow, How can it be? It is really God. It is not my ability. It was not my foresight. It was His that places. In fact, we didn't even have the money to put up our 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 signboard on the top because every money received, we give it to the children. Mm. And end of last year, one pastor told me, I think, Peggy, it's about time you put your signboard. Mm-hmm. I said, no money. <laughs> but the money came. And my goodness, when you are installing more, you look out of the window, you will see living hope. Okay. And that is Jesus. So I thank God for the provision. I really thank God that he has the foresight. <laughs> How can I ever be in a place uh, directly opposite the entrance mm-hmm. of the latest mall in town? I've not been there myself Praise personally, God. but I think anyone who goes to Starling Mall can definitely look out for your they find signage. Us. <laughs> and yes. uh, they, I don't know, can they find out more about the your, your ministry and, and sure. this NGO there? And, yeah, 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 they can come by and uh, they can call us at zero three seven seven two seven five eight eight seven. Give us a call, and uh, we also got to screen our visitors. Um, you know, to to come in, and they, we are more than happy to share what we have done from our humble beginning to now reaching to God's provision and His guidance. We have touched the lives of 44,500 children in the last nine and a half years. And in July 20, uh, 2017, we will be 10 years old. And really a story of God's love and passion for His poor, needy and marginalized children, irrespective of race and kind. We reach out to all children and we are, our presence are in the 14 states of Malaysia and we actually have reached out to a lot of uh, other countries through missionaries and pastors which bring our things over for them and that really it is about the love of Christ to the children in the various countries that we are able to touch uh, their lives, the children's lives. And to you, brothers and sisters, stay on with God. Seek God and His and his righteousness, and the rest will come. It is very, very serious. He's the vine, and I'm the branches, and it really works. Now I look back in my life, I say, how did I manage without him? Then I think back of all the mistakes I made, the trials and tribulations, but that was to make me a better person. So let's hang on to Father God. He's the eagle, and he's going to lead us, and he will lead us through the storms, and not complain about it. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So for those of you out there who are feeling the call to start something or feeling the uh, the burden, in fact, <laughs> like Dr. Peggy shared, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is an, uh, an example, a life example of how God works in a person and, and 10 years of faithfulness. That is so exciting hearing about uh, how the journey, a little bit about your journey with uh, Living Hope 10 years. And we are also... Um, they're definitely looking forward towards uh, the book which you would write for this uh, journey maybe in our future segment um, so thank you Dr. Peggy for being with us today um, here we are signing off thank you <laughs> thanks Dr. Peggy thank you Jason and thank you Adeline for giving me a chance to share about God's goodness this segment's episode features music by Matthew Das. Today's episode is recorded, edited and mixed by Moses Chan at Prodeo Studio. We would love to hear from you, especially if you have a testimony to share. Write to us at hello at ramarad.io. Stream or download new episodes weekly on Friday or Saturday evening. Don't miss out on the sermon Miracles and Mystery by Pastor Jeff Lucas at City Harvest Church KL in the next segment. I found it on Rima Radio.